Well, welcome into Ditch the Suit, Steve Campbell with Travis Moss. We're going to give you some real insights that can better your life today uh, as we want to talk about how to make money by leveraging debt. You know, a lot of people tune in because they need help with personal debt and financial planning. And Travis and I have the ability every day to work with individuals like you that have questions. Am I doing the right thing? Is this what I should be doing? And I think when it comes to uh, personal debt, a lot of people have questions. So I have the ability every day to work as the chief brand officer at Seed Planning Group. Travis is our CEO, operating a fee-only financial planning firm, helping people work through these kind of questions. So we have spent a lot of time working with people, building hundreds of plans and many hours building out these kind of things. So today is going to be a fun one as we talk about how we can begin to uh, make money by leveraging debt, maybe something completely counterintuitive to how you were raised or what you thought. So Travis, what, what is the promise that we want to give people for this episode today? We'll give you the promise and I'm going to put an asterisk next to it. So the promise is, is that you can make money safely by leveraging debt and we'll show you how. Now I'm going to put an asterisk around safely. Safely is not a guarantee. Safely doesn't mean that there's not volatility, but what it means is, is that we can meet some expectations. There's some things that we can do to understand that if we have a debt and we're using that debt for the right reasons, back to our purpose, and we have um, uh, paid attention to the interest rates, there are ways to actually make money on it without just hoping and praying that the stock market goes up or something like that. And it's called leverage or arbitrage. It's, it's people with lots of money, businesses with lots of money, they figure out how to do this. This is what happens when you go to your bank. You know, a, a, a CD is a loan to the bank. They take your money and they make a spread on it. So we're going to talk about how, you know, we've talked about the money business. Now we're going to kind of come back and we're going to talk about how you as a money business can kind of be like your own little money bank as well, making some of these spreads and understanding how, how to calculate that and um, even how taxes might impact it. Yeah. Well, pretty good promise right here at the beginning. And if your ears are wide open, because I'm sure many people are, because we all want to know how to make money, there is some asterisks, but it's going to be pretty cool to walk you through maybe the proof behind this. And then as always, to give you the plan or some takeaways that you can use. So Travis, then give us some, give us some proof that maybe backs up this promise today. Yeah. Well, let's, let's first talk about the concept called spreads. And you and I have been using this for the last three episodes now. We've been talking about spreads. and But let's talk about what a spread is. And this is where you borrow money at one interest rate and you make money at another. So that's the spread. This, it's the difference between the two numbers. So think about how to get a positive spread. You borrow money at three, you reinvest it and you make 10. So 10 minus three, you make 7%. That's your spread. So if you can make, so a lot of people are like, well, I make money. I pay the taxes on it. I invest it. And then I make 8% a year, right? So, okay, that's one way to do it. Another way is I borrow it at three, I invest it at 10 and I make seven. No, I didn't make eight, but I'm also using money I didn't have. And I'm not saying go get a loan and put it in the stock market. That's not at all what I'm saying. What I'm doing is just giving you an example on what the spread is, how to, how to look at spreads. Um, how do you get a negative spread? I borrow money at three, I put it in the stock market and I make zero. That's a negative spread. Um, I borrow money at 5% and my money is in a coffee can making zero negative spread. So when we talk about spreads, all we're talking about is the difference between what it costs to get the money and what you can make when you invest the money. So I think people can generally track with that idea. And again, as Travis said, don't beat us up. We're not saying go do this and go invest in the stock market, but just as an example of spreads, maybe then let's talk about the impact of income taxes on spreads. This is missed a lot. A lot of people are like, I'm very comfortable. I have my money invested and I'm making 5%. Well, and you're making 5% and you've done well in your life. This is how you have some extra money and you're up in that 24% tax bracket. Maybe you throw in an extra 6% for the state. So you're paying like 30% in income taxes. Um, well, you have to take into account taxes on that spread. So let's assume that we get a 2% spread on the loan. We had a 5% investment rate of return. We had 3% interest. So we actually made 2%. We also have to account for, and in this example, I just used 32% for income taxes. We have to account for the income taxes. Well, the income taxes come off the investment return. 
Um, so you take your 5% investment returns, subtract out your 32% in income taxes. That means that your actual real spread is 0.4%. Um, 5% times 68, because that's subtracting out the 32% uh, in income taxes, minus the 3% in interest you're paying equals 0.4% spread. So you think you're doing really, really good because you're getting this extra 2%, but you're actually only netting out 0.4%. So we don't, there's different ways that you could do this. You could do this in an IRA, you could do it in a Roth, you could do it in an after tax account, you could buy municipal bonds, you could buy CDs, all these different things that you can buy. What you buy is going to matter because the taxes are going to have to be calculated and that's going to come out of your spread. So if you only have a 1% spread, um, let's say that your cost to borrow your interest is 6% and your return is 7%. By the time you calculate taxes and stuff, you might actually be negative in some cases. Well, that raises the point that we've been saying for three episodes. The idea of what you are trying to accomplish is uh, something that, you know, most people would celebrate. It's the execution of it or the fully, the not understanding how it all works because you can't see it in real time. And so I think trying to expose this to people, I know it's a lot of numbers, but it can help you maybe get an idea of the way you're trying to doing things, again, a better way last episode to make financial decisions, just understanding. So then talk to us then about cash. How should we be looking at cash? We got to look at cash as at, we got to change the word, the terminology from cash or checking and savings to capital. You have capital to work with back to our money business discussion last episode. You have capital to work with businesses look at it as capital. And what do you do with capital? You invest it with capital or you pay liabilities with capital. And so the question is, is, you know, number one, what's the best way to leverage this capital? Is it to have it and make payments so that I can borrow? Um, or is it to buy things outright so I don't have to make payments because of interest rates or something like that? So I really want to pay attention to how I, you know, to change my thinking from I need to have a bunch of cash to what do I do with my capital? How do I maximize my capital situation? Um, because I can also, you could also think of a situation where, um, you have a slightly negative spread, but you want to have that on purpose because you need to have capital available for some type of reserves. And you understand that that's a, a negative draw, but it's a short-term negative draw. And long-term, when that uh, debt is paid off, the asset that you've purchased returns X, Y, Z. So Rather than foregoing the opportunity, you go, you look, I need to keep the cash or I need to keep my capital available to me um, for reserves. However, I need to make sure that it's making X amount of money to close that gap. And I'm willing to take on a negative um, uh, gap right now because of the fact that once I get through this phase, it goes positive and it goes positive big, huge payoff. So that's just a mindset thing that I think helps. So, so let me see if I got this correct just for our listeners. So you're talking about if you have X amount of money that's built up as cash, now we're calling yep. capital, rather than utilizing that to fully purchase one time, whatever it is, yep. we want to save that because we may need it at some point. If we do have to take out a loan or a line of credit or something, yep. we just have to make sure that you're holding onto that cash that you were otherwise going to spend. You have to earn a little bit of something so that when this thing is done, you're coming out over the top and not using all that money right at the beginning. Is that yeah, correct? Yes, you hit on the nail. And I, and I think I confused, I used the word gap. I meant gap the same as spread. I have, I, you know, I might have a negative spread. So I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to look at what the future value is going to be to justify the negative spread. But, that, um, but that's a very real situation, I think, for some people and why they might yeah. be listening to this. If I got a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars of cash or capital and I have the ability to acquire something, should I just use all of that cash and then I don't have a payment? I feel good, I own it outright. If you take out a loan, you still own it. It's just you're gonna be making payments spread out over time right. and you can still hold on to the capital. So it's not a one size fits all. And I think that's the power of planning is to understand the momentum that you can make from just looking at things slightly differently.